Um, today is a significant day and uh, the largest part of repositioning our municipal assets in Jersey City uh, to Ward F. And uh, I think it's worthwhile to give a little bit of a history on how we got to this point today. And uh, again, say a public thank you to all of our partners there. Um, prior to 2013, when we took office, the city of Jersey City was renting office space uh, across the waterfront in a variety of buildings. And uh, it didn't make a lot of sense to be renters. Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense for us to be in that expensive uh, area of the city on the uh, waterfront. Um, and uh, we thought a lot about how to solve that problem. Uh, at the same time, we recognized that we had this problem here in this part of Ward F with regards to attracting businesses that would stay here for a long period of time. Um, we wanted to energize what was called the hub at that point, um, and we struggled with business after business, with bank after bank, of saying that they felt comfortable in being in the hub. And uh, we tried to marry those two problems and find a solution that worked for everybody, and that's what brings us to where we are today. Uh, what we decided to do was to bring um, hundreds of employees of Jersey City to this part of Jersey City to create a municipal complex uh, of all of our services in one place so it's better access. Uh, we're going to own the buildings rather than renting them and we're going to invest in a community uh, with our own employees leading from the front as opposed to just soliciting others to come and try to get them to be a part of it. And so we started building several buildings here and move, moving our employees over here. To, our, to my left, to your right here, um, you see one of the early buildings that was completed about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's our home to Health and Human Services. Right behind that uh, is the headquarters for Jersey City Employment and Training. To my right here at the next building here is our Center for Affordable Housing and Housing Preservation. Uh, behind us that way is a, another building uh, built for veteran housing and social services for veterans. The building that's about to be completed next month is a parking deck and additional offices to service this area. And that brings us to where we are today, breaking ground on a $120 million public safety complex that will be the new home for police, fire, for a museum, for extensive community space and a community court, all in one building uh, here located at Jackson Square. Real quick, I'd just like to say this is uh, pretty much a seven year dream for us. When uh, the mayor interviewed me to take this job, this is one of the things we talked about. Moving our public services, our police, our fire, our parking, our 911, uh, moving them into parts of the community in Jersey City that don't have the investment that other parts have. And it's been something we've wanted to do. I want to thank everybody who worked with us from police, from fire, Eric, who came up with the, uh, helped us come up with the plans, because it's the next natural evolution in what we're trying to point out here in Jersey City, which is that our police, our fire, our parking, under uh, Director Peretti, our 911 services, we're part of the Jersey City community. We don't need community relations. We're part of it. We're here. We're with you, and we'll always be a part of the Jersey City community. So we're very excited about moving everything up here. The mayor touched on how it'll also make it easier for us to serve the people in Jersey City. They won't have to go all over the city looking for things anymore. They'll be able to come to one place and get everything they want. So we're very excited about that too. Well, I'm excited because when we took office in 2013, there was a challenge to get investment coming this way. But because we believed in the area, we start investing in it. So today, you know, we stand excited because we was the first partakers. You know, there's a saying, if you want to know what a man priority is, really follow the money. Really follow the money. And for us, uh, Ward F has been a priority. If you look at our record, what we invest in, the majority of our investment was in Ward F. So, you know, is a saying, it takes hands to build a building, but it takes people to make a community. So we're excited that we'll have our police and fire department a part of this community. So thank you and God bless. This is just another step in the right direction for Ward F. Some things are home runs, but this right here is a grand slam for our community because it touches on a lot of things that the mayor talked about previously. It's, it's, it's touching on the businesses that this building and the rest of the investments in this neighborhood will, will be able to help bring here and, and fund. It's touching on the property owners who 
need to have these services and the services are going to be right here in the heart of Ward F that makes it really possible to say, hey, this is a community we truly believe in. And, and third, it touches on, you know, bringing local hires and local minorities to work here on their own properties. You know, people such as Bernard Shivers of Bees Construction. Um, before I became the council person, I was the property manager of the, the annex. And myself and Eric and Brandywine, we had a lot of meetings with different businesses that we were trying to get here. And I remember we had a meeting with uh, a, pizza, a pizzeria a chain. And the day that the pizzeria came here, there was a shootout right here in this area, and the pizzeria backed out. Today we're saying no more. We're bringing resources here, and we're going to make sure that we do everything that we can for Ward F. When I got in office, I said I was going to do advocate as hard as I can to make sure that these reset resources come back here to our community. And this is, like I said, just another step in the right direction to make Ward F first. I know you guys see me with my t-shirt on all the time that says Ward F first, and it's not just a slogan. It's a way of life for me to make sure that the place that I live and I've lived my entire life gets the resources that it desperately needs to make sure that this part of the city is represented. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Brandon. Andy Wan, thank you, Bernard. Thank you, every director, public safety director. We've had a lot of meetings about this to make sure that this is a dream come true and Ward F will definitely benefit from this. So thank you to everyone who's made this dream possible, and I can't wait until it's finished. Thank you. Uh, it's an exciting day for all of us. Um, usually at ribbon cuttings and groundbreakings, it kind of gives me a time to reflect of you know, how we got here, where we're going. And I'd like to talk a little bit what the mayor touched on um, earlier. Uh, you know, uh, when the mayor, you know, uh, started, we started meeting with his leadership and vision and the council's leadership and vision. It's amazing when someone has that leadership and vision and then partners with somebody who has a common purpose and has that same vision, what can be accomplished. Uh, in 2016, we started the annex. 2018, we finished the annex. 2019, we started the housing building. 2019, we finished the housing building. 2018, we started the garage and office, and we're gonna finish it next month. We're starting this year on this building, and it's gonna be done in 2022. So if you look at 2016 to 2022, there's six years, and look what's happened. I mean, it's amazing the transformation that's happened here. Jermaine touched on, on what it took you know, we worked closely for years over at the at revitalizing the shopping center. And the difference these developments have, have, developments have made in tenants being interested over there. Now we have m multiple tenants, you know, trying to outbid each other to go in the center. I mean, I don't know if we could ever, you know, thought that. <laughs> uh, so, and, and honestly, it's, uh, it's an honor for me to be able to work with Director Shea and Director Moody. Um, to be able to create their vision and the mayor's vision here. It is a, it's a special project and, uh, and it's, it's, it's great to work closely with, you know, very competent, you know, visionaries. You become friends with these people and create tight relationships because, you know, Director Moody and I talk at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. <laughs> she calls me crazy, but I keep calling her. So, um, and then another thing I want to touch on was the community. Um, you know, I was very fortunate when I started working here for Jermaine, you know, Councilman Waterman, you know, Michelle, uh, Bernard, uh, Muhammad, and the mayor. They welcomed me into this community. I became a member of this community immediately when I started working here. And it, was, and it felt like a family. It really did. So it makes you want to even work harder to change it because of how they make you feel. So I feel really it, feel, it felt really special to become part of this community at the same time, be able to meet the uh, you know minority participation requirements, you know that were set out. Um, it's really uh, you know we come. I've become very close friends with a lot of the contractors. You know Bernard's here today. You know uh, we really care about making a difference, and that's what has made the difference. So uh, thank you, and uh, and we'll see you at the ribbon cutting in about a month. I've been here for five decades. And uh, I've seen a lot of administrations come. 
And I've seen a lot of administration make promises that they can't keep or that they didn't want to keep, whatever the reasons is. When I started out the first term with the mayor before he got elected, we was meeting. And from day one to right now today, everything that he said he will work towards, he has. So that makes me want to get involved a little more because I'm going to help my community no matter what. Anybody that knows me know that. But when you've got other people coming in and making it possible for you to put it on a bigger stage, then that's, that's a great thing. That's a big accomplishment. When we started, I never would think that it can be possible, but it's possible. Now we have the community being a part and building a community. That's the difference. That's something we've never seen. Eric is a great man. We talk, we talk, we talk, but he walks it. It's a difference. We bring people from the community and give them hope. Show them a different light so they can understand that it's possible if you put the work in. I never give up. I never will give up. We got a great council. This is honestly the best council I ever seen because I wouldn't go to meetings. I wouldn't even call now. I see them and I smile because all the things that they say wasn't possible, they're making possible. And that's for change. And Jersey City right here, Ward F, is desperately needed it. And the mayor is making it happen. So I back them 100%, no matter what. When I'm in the room and they're not in the room, they're in the room. That's how it's gonna always be. Then we got other contractors here that's putting an effort like, yo, okay, this can happen. And they push them forward. Now you got minority contractors becoming real contractors and not getting the door shut in our faces like we always have. And it's a great thing when you have Jermaine, like a brother, pushing it because he knows that I've been pushing him before he even became councilman. Because this is my dream. And I want to thank everybody for allowing me to be in this, be a part of it, and represent those that's not heard. They heard now. I'm in the room. We're going to continue to fight, and we want to thank our mayor to the highest power. Thank you. When this building is complete, I'm sure uh, I'm not going to be the only one excited that I will not have to ride up to Central Avenue <laughs> and not find anywhere to park, <laughs> to go to the parking authority, um, and in Journal Square. And it just makes a lot of sense to put everyone in one building. It just is going to make life and functionality a hell of a lot more uh, easier. Than it, than it has been. Um, I want to thank uh, Mayor Fulop. I want to thank the City Council. I want to thank Brandywine. Um, this, is, this, is, this is serious. This is major. Um, and, and it does bring a lot of people to this area. It certainly uh, increases the foot traffic at least Monday through Friday. And uh, I'm going to echo something I said at the groundbreaking for the annex. Uh, Jackson Hill and other folks in the community look forward to continuing the work with the city because now we have to address north and south of this site, right? It, 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 you know, one, two, three buildings are not going to holistically improve the entire area. So the work will continue, it has to continue,
and this is going to be a true light and uh, there's so much potential in this area of the city and uh, it can be it can become tangible and I look forward to working where'd he go where you at <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to continuing to work with the mayor and, and the councilman and whoever is in office uh, because it's beyond the individuals. It's about this entire community and, and, and the people, the economic growth and viability of this community. So uh, that's my two cents. Uh, uh, and everyone have a great day and this is, this is, this is going to be a uh, pretty uh, impressive. Thank you.